Today, we are going to make mittens. Why? Because I'm always losing my mittens. They never fit. They're too big. I have short, fat hands. <laughs> so no, nothing ever fits. And so um, I looked on the internet and got a bunch of patterns. Uh, so tried a bunch of them, went and got some fleece, tried them. And I really don't care for the fleece, but I really like this like cuddle stuff. Got some of this, like they call it, I call it Sherpa fabric, which is like a wool on one side and this fuzzy stuff that literally gets everywhere. <laughs> but this, uh, but everything I saw on the internet, they always had you line them. And I don't like them lined. I want something that I can feel through, especially if I'm driving. Uh, yet I want them to be warm. And, you know, I want everything that's like not available out there. So I was looking up how to uh, patterns. Okay. The best pattern place I found was from, let's see, it's called so or fleecefun.com. F L E E C E. FUN.com and she's got free mitten patterns and that's what I started with and and I thought this is going to be the best one because I have like seven different sizes three kids and and four adults so I tried the regular women's one and it's and then my hands are swimming in it okay I tried the large child one doesn't fit it's too too it the the finger length is fine, but it was too narrow. I couldn't get my hand in and out. I cut them out anyway. So, but we'll we try them and I'll show, I did cut them out and we'll talk about the fun with this stuff. And when we go to construction, I'll be using probably her pattern. Although I'll try cutting out my own. So I decided I was going to venture into making my own pattern since nothing fit. Um, so what, most of them did. What people had you do was stick your hand down here, close it up like do like this, and draw your hand and add a half, add a, I think they said add at least a half an inch to an inch. The only one problem with that is that I don't walk around outside with my thumbs to the side. And so any <laughs> even though it's stretchy fabric. Whenever I go like this, okay, I'd have all this fabric on the inside and it would stretch on the outside. And I felt like I my thumbs were sore from always having to fight the fabric. So that didn't work. So I did go looking for the pattern that looks like this. And this one is her, this one is um, was it, fleece funds pattern. And so what they had to do is you essentially took this bought this part that with no thumbs and the inside you had thumbs that went together like this and I looked at some of the mittens out in the stores and that's kind of how they're made only most of them in the store are all knitted but I didn't want them knitted so I thought well okay I'll try her patterns but again none of them fit so I said I'll just do my own here's what here's how I came up with doing mine okay and just watching how this this there was one guy who was making them out of leather and he was just like it was a guy so you know it's interesting <laughs> so, so what he had he did and he made mittens the same way so what he had you do is you follow the hand pretty closely however shape you want it and as long as you wanted it so i want it oh about there so that's as long as i want it i'm going to mark where my wrist is and I'm going to spread my fingers and I'm going to mark really tight inside where that thumb goes. Okay. And I'll just sort of true that up a little bit. Okay. I just sort of round it so that it's a little more pleasing. And this gives me no go give whatsoever, which is okay. I got to add it. So I know for this outside piece, it's got to go at least around there. So it's got to be at least four and a half inches wide. Okay, so, and then I need to add a half an inch. 
So I probably need to add three quarters of an inch, but for safety, I'm going to add one inch to this. So I'm just going to come along here and draw this in. Oh, one inch makes it a little too big. But you also want to take into consideration how much stretch does your fleece have. This one doesn't have much of anything. Okay, I'll make it an inch. So I'm just going to go around here and sort of draw the inch. Let's see. And you guys in Facebook, you have to let me know if you have any questions. Okay, we're still good. Okay, so I'm just going to rough this out. Okay, this will be sort of my master pattern. And it's the pattern for the outside. So then I would take my ink and the lines I would mark on this one is I know I need to do a line across here for the elastic. And here's where my thumb goes, okay? So now I've got to make that inner thumb piece. So like, let me think, what do I, so here's, here's what I came up for my outside. So I drew it nicely, cleaned it up, <laughs> okay? So, so I know my bottom has got to match the top, okay? Because these two pieces are eventually going to go together. So I would take another piece of paper. And this one, I've got the marks where I can see them. This sometimes might help to put it on a light box. I'm not worried about whether it's right or left because that's going to be how you cut it. Okay, so I know the bottom part is going to be exactly the same from here. The bottom part is exactly the same. So I can really bat up to there. It's all the same. And then I'm going to, here's where the elastic would go. So I know that's the same. Here's where my thumb goes. And this is going to be my, now my seam allowance. So I got to figure my seam allowance. This is where I want my seam, about a half an inch. Okay, so I would draw and it's right here. So I'm going to draw a line straight across here. And I need to come up and stick my finger in there. And I know that seam has got to come to about there. So there's my seam allowance. And thumb in here, kind of like that. Okay, so if I take this piece and now go a half an inch out, I know this will fit my thumb with a seam. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this line, and this is sort of, I'm just going to slant it down a little bit, not go straight across, but slant it down. And I know, so this is going to be the seam line for the pieces that connect these two parts together around, that'll go across the palm of the hand. Okay, so I need, okay, this is my piece. So here's my seam line. So I'm going to cut it here. Okay, so this makes the bottom part and label it bottom. Okay, so I've already done that on this one. Okay, so now you would take this piece, get another piece of paper, okay, so we know this goes to here. Here's my seam line for that. So we know that goes there. Here's my seam, here is my thumb. Thumb breaks right here. Then I'm going to turn this <laughs> this way, matching up your seam line and what you've got drawn already, okay? Because now this is the top part, so the seam has got to, got to come down here and you just trace this out. Here comes your, this is your top, okay? This is the top. So these two pieces, so now I'll cut out my top. And here's my paper scissors.
Okay. And now we cut this puppy out. Here is fuzzy fabric. And it's usually pretty wide. This stuff is usually really wide. I think it's 60 inches. So I put it right sides together. And this one, I don't think you can see it on camera, but one has got like a, yeah, you can see like a chevron pattern. See how you can see mm -hmm. that right there. That's giving me a chevron pattern. And I want that on the outside. I'll cut this one out. Now, if you want yours lined, you, you cut four of e you cut four of each piece. I'm only going to be me, so or I'm, I'm not lining them. Let's see. We're going to switch to the other camera and we'll start sewing this together. I'll need some elastic for the wrist. I'm going to take out the pin so I have a, a bottom and a top. And I'm going to put it right sides together. It's hard to mark this because it's fuzzy. And so my seam allowance is right here. I'm just going to put a little pin right there to the seam allowance. Wherever this seam is right uh, this way, okay, wherever this seam is going to be right here, I'm going to start sewing opposite. So right straight across. So here's where I'm going to start and stop sewing. I'm just going to do one right now. Okay. And I'm going to start on this side. Start on the other side, and I want to use about three-eighths to a half-inch seam allowance. You can use a walking foot if you like. Okay, I'm going to back tack. In other words, I've got it at center needle position, and I'm just going to and I'm just going to. Like I said, you don't have to use a walking foot. If it's giving you fits, then go ahead and by all means use it. Okay. Okay, and there's about where my seam allowance is. Maybe one more stitch. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to match these. One is slanted up and one is sort of, sort of, one's curved up, one's curved down. Just make a match. And okay, and I'm just going to stick my finger in here. Let's see if this thing fits. Oh, perfect. Here's the inside of my thumb, and it's just touching the outside, so I'm a happy camper. Okay, now I'm going to get, take the outside piece, then I'm going to... Okay, yeah, put this right sides together. I'm going to sew here. Okay, one half inch down. Okay, and I'm just going to sew up to just where it starts to curve. There we go. I didn't even pin it. Okay. There we go. I'll go around to the curve. I just want to be able, probably that's as far as I want to go for now. Okay, because I'm not lining this. Because her instructions were you made two of these and then you put them together. I want to sew a hem. 
Okay, and you can press this open, but it doesn't have to stay open. Press about a half an inch hem, or you can't press, you just have to sew. Can't do it. And I can zigzag that if I like. Let me zigzag it. Okay, and I want about a three and a half, just so it looks a little nicer. But it doesn't, it's wanting to eat it. Probably walking feet would help this. Okay. And I'm just putting in my hem now. And then I'm going to put my elastic in. So I'm going to measure my wrist and cut it that. That's good. All righty. You know what? It can't mark this very easily. So I'm going to do it with pens. About right there and right there. Okay. Alrighty, and I'm going to zigzag in my my um, elastic. Okay, so with elastic, you you just let it go for about an inch. Then I'm going to pull it. Let's see, pull it straight across. Oops, lost it. Okay. There we go, until I can get to the back and then I'm gonna give it a nice stretch. Pull this this way to here. Okay, good. And I think I need a new scissor cutter. <laughs> Okay, now put this back together. And now this time I'm going to start over here and pin my inside of the wrist, match up the elastic. <laughs> Starting to fill with fuzz in here. Okay, I'm going to sew, if you can, let's see, bring this to where we can see this. All righty. Here's my thumb. I'm just going to pin it, put that thumb going this way and pin it and sew to right there. Then I'm going to break thread, pull this back and then sew the rest of this shut. Like I said, these don't take long. I want center needle position and a two and a half length. There we go. Backwards. There we go. Okay. Straighten that out. All righty. There's my pin. I'm not going to take that pin out till the very last minute. Okay, pin touched and reverse it and cut. Okay. Okay. And I, again, because this is furry and dark, I can't see it. <laughs> okay, I'll just mark it with a pin so I can see where it is. Okay, I'm going to take, take one or two stitches. I'm going to hand walk it for a stitch or two. Reverse it. Okay. And now match up the rest, and here we go.
Where did I stop? Okay, right here's where I stopped. You <laughs> cannot see it. <laughs> yeah, walking foot would have helped. Okay, where did the end right there? I'm just overstitch it and back tack because this is going to take a lot of wear. Okay. And before I turn it, I'm just want to try it on. I have to do it with this hand. Wonderful. It's just right. Okay. I want to clip the thumb. It was just going to be interesting because I can't see the stitching at all. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to turn that thumb right side out. Turn this out. Okay, let's see. Oh, I like it. It it feels good that I don't feel like I got a handful of uh, fabric in my hands and I can move and it feels nice and tight around my wrist. I have to clip threads and stuff. I don't feel this seam at all. You know, like there, maybe it's because it's really soft fabric, but I don't feel that at all. Some people have like curved it. Some people went like, made it come down through the middle I went oh, yeah it's too complicated I just went straight across and it actually is nice this is probably the only set of gloves in the entire earth that now fit my hand so I'm going to make the other one just not right now okay now let's talk a little bit about this Sherpa fabric now this was the one this one is the child one and it and I can't get my hand in it so I'm going to send this one to you know, Pearl is probably a little big for Elio right now because he's only five <laughs> or it's going to be six soon, but still a little big, but you know, he'll grow into it. If not, one of her nieces can fit. Okay. The problem with this stuff is um, this is really hard to sew through, not yet, because it wants to move everywhere and it's very thick. So what I had to do was I went along and I cut the fabric out from the seam, which is a very messy, messy task because <laughs> it's about a half an inch thick. It takes a little while because this would be a very, very thick seam. And usually after going an inch or two, you've got to dump things in the trash can. And this one definitely did slide all over the place. So the walking foot would be really helpful. But I thought these, these are really warm and I have enough fabric to make another set for me because this is really the one I want. I even have enough to make a set for Terry. Only men have this macho thing where they have to, they think they should freeze their hands outside. That's manly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's it, quite a bit can come out because that's going to make for a very, especially if you're not going to line it. And I don't want this, this one, you couldn't line this. It's too thick. You'd have to have two different sizes, one for the inside and one for the lining. Every once in a while, you gather it all up, put it in the trash, get the vacuum cleaner out. And actually, this is a really nice fabric, and it's it's not that hard to use. It's just this part, it, the cutting things out with it is messy. Also, when you mark it, you're going to have to mark it with chalk, because I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't pin through all. I mean, I could pin through it all, but by the time you pinned, it would distort the pattern. So it's better to cut out one layer at a time and chalk, chalk your pattern in. We're almost there. But it's like working with fur. You've got to cut you got to cut the fur with a razor. You've got to actually, fur you usually cut with uh, a razor blade. You don't 
cut it with scissors. So you would treat it the same way, but like you would put your pattern piece on the top and just take chalk and chalk it on, then cut it out a single layer. Because I found it really distorted whenever you started putting these. When you start putting these together, they want to go everywhere. So this one would go the same way. This is the right side. And we would put it together exactly the same way. Only this one's curved and I, that was not fun. So you would again, sew it. Now what she had you do is that you took your piece of elastic and put it on each side. So I didn't see why it was necessary to have your elastic seamed on both sides. To me, that that's a weak spot. Also, that's uncomfortable. I think I've got mine. Where did I put mine so that it goes? Where is the one I just did? My seam. The seam is in the inside, so you don't really feel it where the elastic is. But I mean, you could put it on both sides. It wouldn't really matter, but you like that. Okay, it can snow now. I got mittens. Do the same way. Now this one, this one, this part, you can see it curves up and this one curves down. So that's another, it's a lot of pinning you got to do. And because this is wool on one side, it has no stretch. So that's another reason it doesn't fit. You have to make it bigger. But I like, yeah, this one, and yeah, I didn't, and it had curved at the bottom because it meant you were going to put a lining together with it. Not doing that. I thought it helped a lot to make your own pattern. Yeah, I think that made a big, big difference for me anyway. So, uh, that's about it. So tonight's a short night. <laughs> we got everything done early. So does anyone have any questions or anything they would like to see or do? So you guys have a wonderful, fun, wonderful evening sewing. Thank you for watching. And uh, come on back next week. We'll have more fun. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay.